I will be there. Hey everybody, Lindsay here, and this is my review for The Green Knight. The Green Knight. I have been looking forward to this movie for what, two years now since they first announced it. It was supposed to be released last year, but because of COVID, like everything else, it got pushed back. But I was very, very excited for this movie. It, the teaser trailer looked amazing, and that was the only trailer that I looked at because I don't, I don't want to have shit spoiled for me. Show me the teaser trailer, I'm good. I'll still come see it. I don't need any more trailers. But Yes, the Green Knight, based on the Arthurian legend Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I know everyone and their dog has a different pronunciation for Sir Gawain. In this movie, each character says it a different way. <laughs> they say Gawain, or they say Gawain, or Gawain, or... Uh, go. Uh, g <sighs> There's a lot of ways to pronounce this name. I say Gawain. Gwain, Guan, it's endless. But anyway, let's talk about the movie. I went and saw this uh, just this past Thursday. I was very excited. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to see it the day it's supposed to be released. We have to go to the sneak peek showing on the Thursday before. So we did. There was maybe eight other people in the theater, but I had my popcorn, I had my soda, and I was ready for this. And the basic overall story of the Green Knight is that Arthur and his knights have come together along with other people in the kingdom to celebrate Christmas and King Arthur, in the movie he's not really referenced as King Arthur, but he's King Arthur, okay, says, is there anyone that can tell me a tale, regale me with a tale and entertain us on this Christmas day? And no one steps forward. And then all of a sudden the door is burst open and the cold air rushes in and this huge knight astride a huge horse enters the hall and he is completely green. Not just the armor he is wearing, but his skin is green and he carries an ax in one hand and a holly branch in the other. But he's very menacing looking. He's really green and so is the horse, but that doesn't matter. Anyways, so he proposes a game. It's referred to as the beheading game and it comes up a lot um, in different legends, Arthurian legends and other legends around this time period. But he says, if any of your knights are brave enough to uh, strike one blow against me, then in a year's hence, I get to return the favor. So none of the knights are stepping forward. Arthur thinks he's gonna have to step in, and then Gawain says, I'll do it, and he picks up the knight's axe that has been offered as a weapon, and he chops his head off. He could have just nicked him, or just like went, touch, eh, eh, that's my blow. But no, he cuts his head off, and instead of this green knight being dead, he is still living, he grabs his head, and he's like, I'll meet you in a year, buddy. It's my turn, and he takes off. So Gawain has to, in one year's time, go seek out the knight in the Green Chapel to let him do that same blow upon him. So he's like, okay, all right, awesome. In a year, I get to have my head chopped off. One year hence. <laughs> So the tale of Sir Gawain is this uh, game with the Green Knight and his journey hence to the Green Chapel and what takes place there. And it's a story about honor and chivalry and duty and being all those things that are, are wrapped up in being a knight. Now in this movie he is not yet a knight. In the in the legend he is a knight. He's the youngest of Arthur's knights and he's and in both the legend and this movie he's also the king's nephew. Anyways, my overall thoughts on the movie is that it's absolutely gorgeous to watch. The cinematography and the camera work and the special effects that they do 
are otherworldly at times and just very peacefully beautiful at others. The sound design is also really, really good. There were there were parts that almost reminded me of like ASMR, which I'm not a huge fan of, but in this venue it works. For the most part, I really love the acting. Dev Patel as Gawain is very, very good. I barely, I, I recognize him physically, but this is such a departure of some of the other roles he's done where he's played a teen, but in this one he's very reserved and very dialed back and uh, very contemplative with his acting and I really really enjoyed it. I think he I can't wait to see what else he does in the future because I think he he can really do some amazing things and he does some of those in this movie. This movie also stars Alicia Vikander who was Tomb Raider. <laughs> Wonder if we'll ever, ever get to see a sequel to that movie. Highly doubtful. <laughs> Anyways, and also Joel Edgerton. And it's written and directed by Dave Lowry, who did Ghost Story, Pete's Dragon, Old Man with a Gun, and a bunch of other movies. I'm not the biggest fan of his other work. Um, I haven't seen all of it. But he's, he's a very competent director, and he's very good at uh, atmospheric visuals. And that's a lot of what's in this film, is atmospheric visuals. As far as the the plot and the storyline and and what the meaning of this film is i think they took departures from the original legend which are understandable but completely change the meaning of the story and yeah the 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 <laughs> The reasoning and, and the the message and the moral behind the original legend are, are pretty outdated in 2021, but they can still have resonance. So I, I don't know if I was 100% behind all of the changes that they made. I think some of them were very smart and needed to be done. Others, I think, took away from, from some of the main points of the film and some of the main points of the legend. But I mean, how do you make a film <laughs> in today's age about old-fashioned notions of chivalry and honor? It's not easy to do. And not have it come off as super hokey and lame and cringy. Not easy. But for the most part, he, ha he pulled it off in this. And what do you hope to gain from facing all of this? Alright, we're gonna get into a few spoilers now. There's just a few little things that I want to discuss as far as the differences between uh, the original legend and what's in the film. So if you have not seen The Green Knight yet, I highly recommend that you do go see it. But if you have not, skip to this time code to avoid spoilers. <laughs> All right, let's talk a few little spoilers. I did have a few problems with this movie. It didn't grab me as much as I was expecting it to. The visuals grabbed me and the music and all of that, but there were some storytelling elements and some character actions and interactions that I think kind of took away from what the main focus of the film was. The biggest change that they make is that when he gets to the the castle with the lord and lady who uh, we figure out later on uh, the lord is the actual great knight and he's being tested anyways um he doesn't spend as much time there as he does in the legend um there's only one exchange of kisses between him and the lord and if you're not familiar with the legend when he ends up at that castle with the lord and lady they they strike the same deal of I'll go hunt every day and I will give you what I kill if you return the favor by giving me anything that was given to you while you're in my home. And on the first day he does do that because the the lady of the house tries to come on to him but he's a chivalrous knight 
and he doesn't want to offend her but he also does not want to accept her advances so he accepts one kiss which he gives to the Lord at the end of the day second day she tries it again uh, doesn't get him to uh, help whack himself off whatever happened in that scene in the movie uh, that doesn't happen but she ends up, he's able to keep her at arm's length again and she gives him two kisses which he eventually gives the Lord when he returns with the hunt of that day. On the third day, same shit, but instead of um, just kisses, he gets three kisses, but she also gives him a ring and says that, you know, no harm will befall you if, if you have this ring. Well, he doesn't tell the Lord about the ring. He gives him the three kisses, but he doesn't tell him about the ring. So he is not 100% honest. So when he does go to the Green Chapel, um, he does flinch on the first one like he does in the movie. But in the story, he only is nicked on the neck because he was mostly honest. But he didn't, he didn't tell about the ring. And this whole thing was set up uh, by Morgana, is that her name? The evil witch stepsister, whatever, of Arthur. Um, Morgan Le Fay. That's her name, Morgan Le Fay. This was all set up by Morgan Le Fay to, uh, to torture Arthur and scare the shit out of Guinevere, pretty much. Anyways. <laughs> um, so he just gets the nick on the neck and he gets to go home and I, th I think he gives him, there is a green sash that comes into play, I can't remember 100%, but all the knights start wearing the green sash to remind them to be honest. It's a, it's a morality tale about honesty and chival chivalry and honor. And in the movie, when he gets to the, uh, the green chapel, he, we see him flinch and then flinch again, and then he just, he does, he, he, he has a, sorry, I'm backtracking here. This is so hard to explain <laughs> sometimes. The lady gives him a green sash, which was originally given to him by his mother, but then the thief stole it, but now she has it, so she gives it to him, so now he has it again, which I don't know what kind of sense that makes, but anyways, he's got the green sash and no harm can befall him while he's wearing this. So he keeps it on when the knight's supposed to chop his head off, but he keeps flinching and flinching, and then he finally runs away and returns home. And I don't know what story he tells, Arthur and his mother or whatever if he says he defeated the Green Knight or whatever because he gets knighted by the king The king dies. He becomes the king. He fucks over his little side piece girlfriend who really loved him and Stole their baby from her and let her live in destitute for the rest of her life and then marries a, a queen by an obvious arranged marriage and then his his reign is is just clouded with war and turmoil and just shitty, shitty things. And at the end of this part, um, you know, he's sitting on his throne and he's got his his crown and everything. And the the walls to his his hall are being torn down by enemies. And he's about to be murdered. And he takes off the green sash and his head falls off. And then we jump back to the green chapel and he's there. He's seen what will happen if he does not fulfill his oath. If he does not follow his word. So he's like, okay, I can live for quite a while, but my life's gonna be super shitty and marred by dishonor and horrible, horrible things or I can be an honorable, honest person and let this guy chop my head off. And so he lets the guy chop his head off. And I, I do like that changing of the narrative because it's like, what's more important to, to live a life free of consequence almost or to, to die an honorable death?
So I was a little taken aback by some of the changes that they made. The more I think about them, the more I've come to accept them, but they still kind of throw me off a little. I'll probably need to see the movie at least one more time to really put everything together. But those are the major changes that they made. And while I don't agree 100% with all of them, a majority of them are are very well thought out and very well done and very much needed to tell this story in in the world we live in today. Hey everyone, this is Editing Lindsay and it's been a couple days since I recorded this review so I've thought a lot more about what I had to say and what I thought of the film and I came to another realization about one of the changes that they made and that was to the character of Gawain himself. In the legend he's already this chivalrous honorable knight and even though he's the youngest of the knights and he has yet to prove himself, he still has these basic core values of what it is to be a knight. Gawain in the film, he seems to be just very lackadaisical, lazy, not... He's just kind of fucking around is what he's doing. He wants to be a knight, but he doesn't want to do the real work to, to become one. So his mother concocts this whole plan to, to get him to be a knight, but it goes off the rails, like, and she doesn't expect it to. And so he's sent out on this journey pretty much to his death, and that's why she becomes the fox to try to keep him away from this. But I, I think that's one of the smarter changes that they made was they had to change the character of Gawain to kind of this, this coward and this person that doesn't that wants the the status but doesn't want to put the work in to get that status and this journey and this quest that he has put on makes him realize that and realize no I have to be an honorable man I can't just just take a knighthood and on on false pretenses I actually have to do the work and let this guy chop my head off so I that's I, I, I really agree with that change and I really like that change and I just wanted to add it to this review because I think it's an important thing to think about when thinking about this movie. Anyways, back to my review. And my only other complaints are just as far as some of the acting roles and such, like Alicia Vikander, I, I don't think we needed that much from her. And also, she has a very nasally voice, and it's hard to understand her sometimes, especially if she's leaning into her accent, which she is in this film. So, and she she has a lot of very important lines talking about the future and the path that's, that he's headed on, and people like him are headed. And it would have been nice if those lines were a little clearer. This also happened with the guy who played King Arthur. He was very hard to understand sometimes because he was playing a very weak and like sickly King Arthur at the end of his life, at the end of his reign, and he, some of the way he was speaking to be kind of affected made it hard to understand sometimes when he was speaking. And to have, um, Morgan Le Fay be Gawain's mother, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that's <laughs> part of any legend or lore, um, so it, so I was very confused as to what her ultimate intentions were to maybe get her son to become a knight or, or what her ultimate thinking was, that she was hoping that he would just like graze the knight or whatever and then he could go and get his little grazing and then ooh, I faced the green knight and I kept my word so you can make me a knight now whatever I don't know it just seemed a little muddy what her true intentions were but these are very minuscule things this is this is a gorgeous film it's done very very well there's some stuff in it that makes no sense to me <laughs> But overall, I very much enjoyed it. It's a visual feast. The music is very well done. The sound is very well done. Majority of the acting is very well done. So yes, I highly, highly recommend you go see The Green Knight. There's a ton of videos on YouTube and articles and, and printings online where you can read the original legend yourself. It's been translated out of Old English, so it's a lot easier to understand. <laughs> If, if you're a fan of the original Arthurian legend and you have seen the film, 
I'd be curious as to what your thoughts are about it and some of the changes that they made. Whether you feel positively or negatively about that, uh, please let me know in the comments. That is why Light does what he does. Are you ready? That is gonna do it for this review of The Green Knight. So until next time, this is Lindsay signing off. I'll check you later.